Hello, I'm Sue Jean Ko, and I am the Director of Adult Education and Resident Theologian at St. Mark and New Hope Presbyterian Churches. Today is the first video in our Lenten series, Joining Jesus at the Margins. Each Monday, we will share a reflection on one of the chapters of Reverend Dr. Howard Thurman's Jesus and the Disinherited. St. Mark will also have a video uploaded on the Lucan passage every Monday and offer a text study discussion in person and on Zoom every Wednesday morning. On Wednesday evenings at 6.30, New Hope will host a Zoom study on Thurman's book, taking one chapter a week. And on Fridays, we have invited folks from the, our communities to put those two texts in conversation with each other. Now, it may seem overly complicated, but we've put these two texts in conversation and created these opportunities for a couple of reasons. One, we believe that both texts together will bring to life what it means to join Jesus at the margins in a powerful way. Thurman's text will bring to life the gospel narrative, which for many of us, even in the church, may seem irrelevant or too distant from our own realities. Thurman's book brings to life the very humanness of Jesus in a direct and immediate way. It is an invitation to pick up our Bibles and read it anew. It's an, ex an invitation to experience scripture closely, to wrestle with it and with Thurman's text, and to listen for the heartbeat of God. Two, Thurman's text challenges our understanding of the relationship between our faith and actions in the face of tremendous social and political crises, but not in the way that we might often think. It is easy, he writes, for us to take for granted the relationship between our faith and our ministry for those in need. Christianity is a faith tradition that takes seriously the commitment to helping the poor and vulnerable. Both of our churches are a witness to that reality in many important and meaningful ways. But what might it mean to understand that the central question of our faith is not what we might do for those in greater need than ourselves, but rather what Christianity offers those who find their backs to the wall? Reverend Dr. Thurman himself knew intimately what it meant to have his back to the wall. As Vincent Harding, the African-American scholar, activist, and pastor writes in his foreword, Thurman was born into the Black community of D Daytona Beach, Florida at the turn of the 20th century. He was nurtured by his maternal grandmother who had endured the, quote, fierce crucible of slavery while leaning on the Lord, end quote. And he insisted that there was a parallel and overlap between the experiences of Jesus the Jew living in the shadow of the Roman Empire, the son of a carpenter and from a small backwards town, and the experiences of African Americans in the contemporary moment. But Thurman's point isn't just that there is a correspondence in experience. In Jesus and in African American communities, Thurman points to, as Harding describes, a path of creative, courageous integrity. Thurman wor worked on the content of Jesus and the, of the dis and the Disinherited over the course of many years. The content started as a series of sermons and then became the text that we have before us today in 1948. And I think it is this slow working, this attention and wrestling that gives this short book the prophetic power that it does today. It was said that Martin Luther King Jr. carried a copy of it during the civil rights movement. I mention this so that we will actually resist the temptation to think that Thurman's words are only relevant for a time past. In a national climate that is fractured over the realities of racism, reproductive rights, and sexuality, Thurman speaks to us today. He insists that the way forward is not by assimilating to the structures of political power or through reactionary violence, or even by finding comfort in our spiritual institutions. 
but he believes that our faith, our spirituality, is what will give us the moral compass to wade through the deep, churning waters of uncertainty and toxic power. He challenges us to reflect deeply on the interpretations of Jesus that we have allowed to settle in our minds and hearts and ask if, in fact, we follow a disinherited Jesus. So I invite you to take this journey with us and to allow yourselves during the season of Lent to see and experience Jesus anew. <laughs>